It's brass tax time at the Capitol as the legislature nears adjournment. We talk about it next on Capitol View. Welcome to Capital View, the weekly program on state politics and government and how it might just affect you. Joining me this week on Capital Week is Capital View, excuse me, is Peter Hancock, writer for Capital News Illinois. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. And also Kent Redfield, Professor Emeritus of Political Science at the University of Illinois Springfield. Welcome, Dr. Redfield. Good to be here. Great. Lots of stuff happening as, we, as we're meeting here right now. Uh, even as we speak, the legislators are talking about stuff, uh, how it's going to end up, who knows. But they have less than, well, exactly one week left. As we, as we talk about this. And so lots of big things still yet to be done, as is traditional in Illinois. They never seem to get the, the things uh, that we really need and want done until the very last minute. Uh, first among them, let's talk about the state budget. Um, it's supposed to be balanced. Uh, what are the prospects that we're going to see a budget done on time that's balanced, that doesn't have any gimmicks in it? I think this year it's more complicated than in previous years because the so-called balanced budget that Governor Pritzker outlined in February depends on a whole lot of new revenue mm -hmm. that lawmakers haven't yet approved. Uh, legalizing marijuana, increasing cigarette taxes, uh, a new tax on managed care organizations, the met insurance companies that run Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, a baggy tax, uh, there were, and um, expanded video gaming mm -hmm. and sports betting. Mm -hmm. So in order for this budget to balance, mm. they've got to get all of those new revenue streams coming in, mm. or they're going to have to make some serious cuts. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, the gaming, gambling, let's call it what it is, <laughs> I mean, that seems to be a pretty important pillar here. Uh, every time we look at this, it seems like, hey, I've got a new idea, let's put that on. Uh, most recently, for example, the Springfield City Council, we're broadcasting here from the Springfield area, uh, says, well, let's pass a resolution in support of having a casino in Springfield because if Rockford gets one, we want one too. Uh, are they going to overload this tree or is, is, is it going to collapse of its own weight? I think gaming bills tend to, there are so many constituencies out there mm -hmm. that have to be appeased in order for a gaming bill uh, to get through. This time around, there's a new one, which are the major sports leagues. Right. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court has na said last year that uh, states have a right to uh, legalize sports mm -hmm. gaming. And so the Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NFL, all have a stake in this, they're going to want a cut of the action because mm -hmm. uh, it's basically their product that yeah. other people are making money off of. Yeah. And there have to be guarantees that the, uh, that the ga gambling doesn't corrupt the game itself. Yeah. And there have been all kinds of proposals, one of which I think that the leagues like is putting betting windows in the stadiums and the arenas, um, at which apparently shocked pe some you know purists in Chicago. Is, you know, betting windows in Wrigley. Next um, thing you know, there'll be lights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, they've got to get through all of those. Uh, I think it's uh, Representative Zalewski who's in charge of trying to put that puzzle mm -hmm. together, uh, along with all the other gaming gaming things, the expanded video gaming, increasing taxes on video gambling, mm -hmm. uh, more casinos, that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's it's these things often fall apart, mm -hmm. gambling bills because. You load up too much on on the bill, and you got trying to satisfy so many people that you just really can't get a consensus. Uh, this is driven, like everything else, we're going to talk about, by the governor needing X amount of money, and he needs to pass something. I mean, he's built into his budget so much money is going to come from uh, you know the the selling of the licenses and the organizing of of sports betting, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, to get to, you know, a uh, balanced budget, and that always depends on your definition of balanced. If your definition of balanced is we're not going to be any further in the hole than we were last year, <laughs> then mm -hmm. we maybe have a shot. Right. Uh, <laughs> but if you're talking about, uh, you know, not putting off pension uh, debt, or you're talking about paying down unpaid bills, uh, you know, we're really not making a lot of progress on what the governor's outlined. He's yeah. he's trying to get us 
through two years to get to the nirvana of the graduated income tax. And uh, it's a pretty uh, delicately balanced uh, uh, package that yeah. they're trying to put together. He's betting so much on the progressive tax. I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole quote-unquote enchilada, it seems to be, of his vision for Illinois, uh, is we need to have a progressive tax so that we can get the revenue we need fairly uh, raised, so that we can take care of the folks who need to be taken care of and, and, and do all, my, all the other programs. And it's not guaranteed. I mean, it's gone through the Senate, but hadn't gone through the House, uh, which shouldn't be a difficult lift, should it? It will come up in the House. They're getting close to having the 71 votes. Um, I think it did move to the floor of the House out of committee mm -hmm. recently. At least the constitutional amendment did. Yeah. They're still working on the bill that, the trailer bills as, it, as they are, uh, setting what the rates would be. The if fine the print bills. Yeah, <laughs> if the constitutional amendment yeah. passes. Um, they seem to be pretty confident that they will get the 71 votes they need for the amendment. The governor himself has been meeting one-on-one -on -one with some wavering Democrats. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Republicans are solidly against it, so all 71 votes are going to have to come out of what's currently a 73-member Democratic caucus. Yeah. And you know, it's 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 uh, uh, the the idea of uh, trying to uh, uh, pass the trailer bill as we speak. Um, does do folks really have confidence that when they set the rates that it's not going to be a uh, bait and switch sort of tactics? Well, we got it passed on the Constitution. Now we're going to come back and 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 I mean, how how much how possible is that? How much are folks going to play up that possibility? Oh, I, the opposition is focusing on that almost entirely. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, tax, property tax fraud, and <laughs> toilets. And can you can you trust the governor? Uh, and that's an acknowledgement that uh, the basics. You know, is is it, you're talking about we're going to get more government, more services, and the rich are going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And if the alternative is if you don't get the graduate income tax, you're going to get, you know, have big budget cuts. And so you're going to get less government and everybody's going to pay for it. When it's framed in those kinds of ways, uh, that makes the graduate income tax look uh, look pretty uh, pretty attractive. Yeah. Well, and there's, you know, well and there's something of a zinger, too, in the, in the <laughs> form of $1.5 billion that seems to have fallen from the sky, and the Republicans <laughs> now are saying, well, you know, we don't need this. Well, that $1.5 billion, I think most people acknowledge, was a one-time fluke uh, mm -hmm. as a result of federal tax changes mm -hmm. in December 2017. A lot of people did not adjust their withholdings. Um, in, in a lot of states, and I'm not entirely sure about Illinois, but the way it was done, you got a cut in your federal tax liability, but that in some ways increased your state tax liability. Mm -hmm. And so it, a lot of people didn't adjust their withholdings as they should, should have. They will probably fix that next time around. Mm -hmm. uh, so a big part of that one and a half billion uh, was one-time money. Mm -hmm. now, the forecasters, though, have gone back and revised their estimates of future revenue, increasing it by $800 million each of the next couple of years. Um, this is <coughs> always, yeah. you know, when we had the dot-com bubble uh, after George Ryan became governor, we had a big oh. increase in revenue. Mm -hmm. We expanded, you know, built it into the base. We spent money. We even sent, uh, you know, refund checks out to, to taxpayers. And then uh, at the end of Ryan's term, uh, uh, when he wasn't running for re-election, uh, we were cutting budgets because the dot-com bubble had collapsed yeah. and all that revenue went away yeah. and we'd build it into the base. So yeah. this is always, uh, you know, it, 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 trying to figure out where we're going to be two years from now is pretty pretty risky in terms sure. of the budget. Yeah. And we just, you know, we have no rainy day fund. We don't have any any way of building any kind of cushion into the into the budget. In yeah. fact, we have the opposite of a yeah. rainy day fund, which is, you know, six, eight billion dollars worth of unpaid bills. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, separate and apart from that aspect of it, it's a capital bill. Uh, most folks think there's going to be one. Uh, but that's going to engender some tax increases of Pritzker grass his ways, notably uh, for gasoline, uh, for liquor, uh, for some of the, these sin taxes. 
how streaming ex- services streaming <laughs> services yeah <laughs> i mean lordy um, you know <laughs> uh, parking fees yeah. Um, yeah. yeah we'll find something sooner yeah. or later that we haven't taxed uh, with the exception of maybe services or retired people yeah. uh, but beyond that how successful might the governor be in saying he's also he's come he's said you know i'm not going to do pet projects here i'm not we're going to do a straight up capital bill for stuff that's really needed uh, how much is how successful might he be how much of a challenge does he have in saying look you might not like gaming you might not like some of mm. these details here you might not like high gas taxes or, or or higher taxes on gambling but it's worth it how how tempting is that how persuasive is that going to be well the governor proposed doubling the current state motor fuel tax mm-hmm. uh, it's currently 19 cents a gallon he wanted to raise it to 38 cents a gallon at another 19 cents yeah. uh, that one is pretty unpopular yeah. although a lot of people do acknowledge there needs to be some increase in the motor fuel tax then it's you know where do you get the rest of the money um, and in terms of how the money is spent uh, especially on roads and bridges I think they're doing the uh, he is proposing the standard thing, which is to have the Department of Transportation do a score sheet on proposed projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go around to local communities saying what needs to be fixed the most, and uh, you put the projects together, knowing that you have X number of dollars to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, it does need to be distributed uh, you know, throughout the state. It can't all go to Chicago, of course, uh, yeah. because there are, in fact, infrastructure needs throughout the state, yeah. uh, even on the rivers. Uh, so, uh, so I, I think they're going about it the right way. It's just I, I think his you know, grab bag full of different taxes and fees uh, kind of scared some people. Well, you've you're smiling. You, 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 you have to get the money somewhere. Yeah. We have not raised the motor fuel tax in since forever. 1990. Yeah, 1990. What it costs you to register a car, get a driver's license significantly lower in Illinois than it is in in most other states, particularly in the Midwest. Oh, sure, yeah. You know, and so uh, we have not raised revenue and we've put off dealing with infrastructure. Uh, it, in terms of, you know, well, we're, we're going to spend it on a boondoggle project. We are in such bad shape in terms of infrastructure, I think it would be very difficult to find a legislative district that didn't have any number of really critical need projects. If, oh, sure. if, if you're just funding critical need projects, everybody gets a piece of the pie because mm-hmm. uh, uh, we are in desperate shape yeah. as far as infrastructure. I can tell you that I, I drove from Springfield up to Chicago uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, it was the first time I'd done that in a long time, and I came back saying, yep, Illinois needs to. You should have used a rental car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, you know, th- these are all. Like, I mean, anybody who's driven the freeway, uh, mm-hmm. I fifty five. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, Chicago down to St. Louis, it's 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 not a pretty sight, you know. And I guess I wonder about stuff on a sneak preview, sort of a pre pre a look at this. Last week, the governor had said, and the Policy Institute, Illinois Policy mm-hmm. Institute, has said, as even they acknowledge, hey, we got some stuff that needs fixing. They are against some of the new stuff. Uh, you fix what we've got, and and worry about new stuff mm-hmm. later. And you know, I looked actually. There was a, a, a in, it was released last week. Uh, there's been a proposal to spend money to uh, fix the I-72, I-55 interchange to address in Springfield uh, to address congestion issues. And I never knew there was congestion there. And I asked a friend of mine, and he said, "Yeah, there's congestion there when there's road work." And mm. so, um, yeah. so you know, but in, in the main, yeah, I don't think anybody disagrees. Uh, and and it, it is something that the Chamber of Commerce, the Manufacturers Association, and the operating engineers union and the laborers union i mean this is something that does get bipartisan support and business labor support so Mm -hmm. there's a there are an awful lot of very important very influential interests that are all pushing this and so i would be surprised if we don't get something although it's if you do gambling money the governor's talked we're going to do just pay as you go. If mm. we've got gas tax, then we can borrow money, right. which is Bond. the better way to finance yeah. it. Sure. So you've got to find stable revenue streams. But, you know, we're paying for the inaction uh, 
of, uh, you know, pick a number, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of mm -hmm. not really addressing a whole bunch of state needs of which one of them is infrastructure. You know, I think it was the state chamber that uh, pointed out that you may not want to pay these higher taxes, but guess what? You're paying right now, right now. because yeah. of the increased vehicle repair costs, uh, yeah. blowing out tires on bad roads, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so people are paying for it now mm -hmm. for, for the lack of progress. Yeah. Traditionally, uh, when they do a capital bill, uh, members get some money set aside. They can, you know, choose to how how, how it's going to be spent. Not a huge amount of money in the main, but in the past, it's gone for such things as I think uh, 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 I think parking lot at a VFW hall, uh, money for some community groups to do this and that tiny stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that tradition going to continue, or is is is, is that going to go by the wayside? I haven't heard any talk about set aside money, okay. um, and you know. It kind of reminds me of what's been going on in Chicago with the uh, the ward pr ward privileges sure. where, um, that the new mayor there wants to do away with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, putting that kind of you know privilege power in the hands of individual elected officials, I think, is falling out of favor right now. Yeah. Well. Um, We'll see. I mean, it's, it's, it's something where, well, you know, you got one vote you need and I'm it, but I want, pick a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, another thing that is uh, uh, been talked about, you know, since the campaign trail is cannabis. This is, uh, was a fairly uh, prominent plank on the governor's uh, uh, campaign platform. Uh, it still hasn't gotten done. Uh, we're down to a week left. Uh, you have an overwhelming number, well not overwhelming, but uh, a solid percent, majority of, 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 of Americans in Illinois in support uh, legalization of marijuana. Uh, it promises to bring in a not insubstantial amount of money. Uh, the governor had put the figure of $170 million, I believe, uh, in, his, uh, in his first uh, budget release. Then that wouldn't come from uh, taxes and so much so much as fees and licensing applications, but it's not done almost as soon as the bill was unveiled what two three weeks ago now probably close yeah, to, close yeah. They, well it needs work and so we I mean yeah. so you unveiled a bill that, that, that even the folks who support it has uh, uh, acknowledged has imperfections is this bill in jeopardy and, and why have we gotten to this point why hasn't this been a been, dis been dispensed with a lot earlier considering uh, the money involved in the and the social justice issues well and I, I think the social justice issues are part of what's weighing it down right now if it was just straight up legalization let's legalize it get some money off of it uh, it would probably go I don't know if it would pass or fail, but it wouldn't be as complicated as it is now. The supporters have turned this into a campaign for social justice and equity mm -hmm. and, in a way, atonement for the damage that has been caused to certain communities, especially mm -hmm. communities of color, sure. through the war on drugs. Uh, and so they want uh, certain kinds of uh, preferential scoring for applicants who come from those communities. Uh, people who, uh, applicants who've had previous marijuana convictions, mm -hmm. they want a, like a complete erasure of history in terms of mm -hmm. expunging the records of pe people who've been convicted. And, there, and there's doubt about whether that's constitutional. Like there that. is doubt about that and just you know, on principle that alone among some circles is uh, causing concern. Uh, I think certainly the federal government is going to have some interest uh, because under federal law, uh, to qualify for a federal arms dealer uh, license, for example, mm -hmm. they need to know whether or not you've been convicted of certain crimes. Um, to qualify for service in the Coast Guard, uh, you know, they're going to want to know about previous convictions. Mm -hmm. uh, but the supporters are saying we want people's criminal records to reflect what they would be if this law which is just and true and right if this law had been in place the whole time and get rid of the records uh, that resulted from what they consider to have been an unjust law. Well, couldn't the governor, in theory at least, say, okay, I'm going to pardon all these folks. Uh, uh, I can do that without this bill. A pardon is not the same as an expungement. Correct. Uh, a pardon just means you did it, you were convicted of it, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, expungement is erasing history mm -hmm. and saying the conviction never happened. Yeah. And the argument is that uh, if you don't have your record expunged, 
among other arguments. There's, there's mm -hmm. many arguments on this, but you couldn't be a participant in the legal marijuana industry mm -hmm. if you had a criminal conviction in the past, and so that's been one one argument in favor of, of the expungement. Yeah, but and it's it's not all that clear. I mean, there's this is important in terms of the expungement, and 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 you can deal with whatever combination you need to deal with, but we are selling licenses uh, to a limited number of people for mm -hmm. some very large sums of money. Yep. And so it is very difficult to kind of design, you know, set asides and, and yeah. entree when, you've, when, when the purpose is to generate X amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that gets us through this fiscal year and you know we'll fill in a lot of the blanks in the next you know the next go around in terms of exactly how we're going to you know how we're going to fill actually market and do these other things so mm -hmm. you know we're the rollout is you know it's going to take a while and uh, uh, the the pluses of the using the legislative process is you've got a chance to get it right. Mm -hmm. The minuses of using the legislative process is you're using the legislative process. <laughs> if you pass an initiative, uh, you know, and say mm -hmm. marijuana is now legal, mm -hmm. then the legislature has to figure out how Correct. to get that done. Whereas mm -hmm. now we're doing it in terms of you know some kind of affirmative yeah. process and. Yeah. And with all of the, the the joys of the legislative yeah. process. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean what you said. <laughs> we're talking about a limited number of licenses that would be sold in effect by the government mm -hmm. for large amounts of money. Uh, for example, large cultivation centers. There's currently, I believe, 20 or 21. There would be a cap of 30, and no no new ones would be allowed uh, for at least two years, if ever. Uh, we'd have a cap on the number of smaller uh, uh, growing centers, none of which could be more than 14,000 square foot, whereas the big guys can get 100,000 square feet. We've got big cannabis companies coming into Illinois from out of state. You can pack practically here and pant uh, at the prospect of all the money they're going to make. And that hasn't gotten a heck of a lot of attention. I'm going to read something that one of the sponsors said was quoted as recently saying, quote, this is somebody who's uh, mm -hmm. Senator Toy uh, Hutchinson, who's support of, who is a sponsor of the legalization bill. Quote, I do not understand how we can legalize and normalize the use of a product and then give rich people in suits the ability to participate in activity that has destroyed whole communities. What is this but giving a license to print money to rich people in suits? Well, it, it, I, it's more than that. It, I mean, mm -hmm. It's also a license to print money for the state. Mm -hmm. I think it, one of the points that you brought up was the fact that there would be a fixed number of licenses for mm -hmm. growers as well as for the retail dispensaries. Correct. And I'd, of course, it's the retail sales where the real money is going to be made. And I, I asked uh, Senator Heather Staines about this mm -hmm. recently. I said, you know, why are you fixing, you know, a finite number mm -hmm. of licenses? Why don't you just let the market decide mm -hmm. how many there should be and where they should go? And her answer was that in other states that have done that, you get an oversupply of product and some of it ends up getting diverted back into the illegal market. And so they want to have controlled growth. But one, well, let's another have that problem yeah. and then address it. About yeah. It. <laughs> but the other concern is that if you had an open system where if you like getting a liquor store license, yeah. if you meet the qualifications for a liquor yeah. store license, they give you one and you pay for it. Correct. And the license has you know, a nominal cost, whatever fee is attached to it. Hmm. By capping the number of licenses out there, they not only have that nominal cost, but they have a huge intrinsic cost because you don't get one just by meeting the qualifications. Uh, so in my mind, I'm envisioning certain actors out there who will do whatever it takes to get their application to the front of the line. Mm -hmm. This being Illinois with the tradition that it has, uh, that could be cause for concern. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say that Senator Stain says one thing that she wants to do in this bill that they didn't do in the medical marijuana bill is to make it all open and transparent, which is to say that the licenses, uh, the public will have access to see who got them you know, through the Freedom of Information Correct, Act. but the and bill as she unveiled it didn't have that. The bill as unveiled exempted lots of this from disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act. Well, it? she told me earlier this week that that's one of the things well, they've decided we'll to fix. We'll see. What we'll the see. New, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what the new version looks like. And there's absolutely, you know, we can say 30 
licenses and then we're going to see we said x number of riverboat casinos mm -hmm. and then you know yeah. which made those very valuable uh, every time we add another casino it tends to decrease the value uh, we could end up with an open market you know four years from now eight years from now but an open market doesn't generate the kind of money that the governor needs in terms of balancing the budget. You need to have a cap. You need to make those sca that scarcity that uh, gets you to the value. Well, I'll challenge that on one point. Uh, <laughs> if you look at the states that were first to do this, Colorado and Washington, they have amongst the higher marijuana taxes, and they have low, fairly low barriers to entry. Uh, Washington State, it's uh, $250 to apply for a license. If you get it, it's fourteen hundred dollars a year. Uh, that's both for sale and for and for and, and for cultivation. And they're collecting more per capita off marijuana taxes than just about any state of the union. So the governor here in Illinois wants to make the money on the front end from the applications. It appears, and the taxing structure is relatively low. I mean, an ounce of marijuana buds, uh, the tax state tax on that would be ten percent. In, in, and it, compare that to, you know, 25 percent, even higher in some other states. We're, but we're talking about a piece of uh, a state law that can be rewritten. Mm -hmm. So if we make money up front, you know, it may turn out that we need to rethink it in terms of making money when we're actually, you know, growing and selling. But, yeah. uh, you know, at, right now it's getting from one fiscal year to the next fiscal yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, and not falling off the tightrope. Well, it's been a fascinating process, I think, to watch. I mean, there's all sorts of reefer madness uh, statements, I think, that are being made all around. I mean, uh, we've seen stuff. Uh, I was talking with a gentleman who was representing, I think, the Police Chiefs Association, which is against it, and he assured me that 90% uh, of the marijuana in the United States is brought in from Mexico. And I'm like, well, why would you do that? I mean, <laughs> you know, you just want yeah. the challenge of getting past the border as opposed to just bringing it in from Colorado. So that seemed a specious argument. Or, that growing it in your basement or growing in your basement or I mean yeah. you know and look the, the the diversion that we're talking about that's coming from states you know California Colorado Oregon states that have legalized and have a glut of product and so it's coming to places like Illinois I guess and so. that what that was a point that Senator Staines made was that police chiefs around the country will tell you that when they get marijuana when they confiscate it it's tending to come from other states it's not coming from Illinois even or Mexico. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I well, don't know that. <laughs> with that, we're out of time. And so thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Capital View.